This is MuggleCast, your Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast podcast covering everything about J.K. Rowling's magical world. <laughs> this week's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 277. Micah, Eric, and Matt are all here for today's <laughs> April episode. Hello, Matt gentlemen. Matt Britton! Hey! Oh my god, that opening. Oh, I haven't heard that in so long. It's so Never sad. gets old though, right? Well, it did, yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> anymore. <laughs> It's a classic. Oh my god, this is episode 277? Yes. Wow. Yes. There's been a lot of MuggleCast. There's been hours upon hours of MuggleCast. Years and years. Mm. So um, as as everybody knows now, we're doing our monthly episodes, which is very exciting for everybody. Um, and it worked out good this week because we have some news about Fantastic Beasts. Some big news. Uh, and we're going to talk about that first today, but I also want to mention today we're going to do uh, some This Month in Harry Potter History. Uh, Matt came up with a fun segment I think everybody's going to like. We got some good news about the illustrated editions, and Mike is going to rave about Game of Thrones. So it's a very exciting episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do that every episode, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. But I just want to, you know, for the listeners, Matt, what have you been up to? How have you been? It's good to know uh, you're still alive. Yeah, I mean, so far, yeah, nothing's happened. Um, <laughs> I've been, I, I've been doing good. I have actually, I still live in Los Angeles. Um, I am currently doing a podcast with Andrew and formerly you, Micah. Uh, <laughs> And I, I appreciate the tribute uh, that you made to me on my last episode. I, don't, I didn't get a chance to say that to you, I don't think, because you. Oh yeah, you I wasn't absent. even there. I'm glad you liked it. I do appreciate it. Yeah, it was. Did you like my painting of you being drawn like one of (laughs) Jack's French girls from Titanic? I I didn't see that yet. I need you didn't you? Yes, you have. You had to have seen it. You're gonna leave the internet when you see that. (laughs) You're gonna quit. No, I'm serious. I haven't seen it, so okay. uh, Send over a link at some point. (laughs) You're gonna hate it. (laughs) Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'll, I'll I'll text him right now. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, other than that, I've been working um, on my career as an actor and comedian. It's not cheap, but it is fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, and like Matt mentioned, uh, he's on Millennial, which is millennialshow.com if you want to check that out. So let's talk about Eddie Redmayne. Uh, We found out on Friday that he is Warner Brothers' top pick for Newt Scamander in the in their Harry Potter spin-off series. Um it was interesting that uh it was exciting that we're like this is the announcement I think everybody's been really waiting for. And while this isn't an announcement, he is Warner Brothers' top pick. And uh the problem right now, the hold up, is that JK Rowling, we actually learned on Friday, is still working on the script. Mm. So and he hasn't read it yet. Uh, but I guess he's had a couple of meetings maybe with David Yates and, uh, they're down for working together. Apparently, uh, according to one report, it's Eddie's to lose. So in other words, he'll get it if he wants it. It's just a matter of JK Rowling finishing the script and then him reading it and being like, okay, I'm, I'm good for this. Mm -hmm. So what were your guys' first reaction to this prestigious actor? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he is British, and he's uh, 33, by the way. So, oh, I uh, obviously people people uh, may have known him before he was Marius in Les Mis, the recent Les Mis with Hugh Jackman. Um, but I didn't know him much before that. I saw him in a movie called My Week with Marilyn, where he played uh, the lover of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, kind of like a hopeful, I think he works in like the wardrobe department. He's like an intern who happens to, uh, spot Marilyn, uh, on a film set and develops a relationship with her. But it was just like this no, you know, not known indie film that he was in. And I, I thought he had some pretty good acting chops. Uh, and that was before, 
I heard him sing and lay Miz and stuff. So I know I like the guy. I actually just genuinely like the guy. I haven't seen Jupiter Ascending. Apparently, if you see Jupiter Ascending, it's hit or miss on whether or not you still want to see this guy do anything. Um, <laughs> I'm going to but... guess miss <laughs> the movie on a whole. <laughs> lay Miss, maybe. But uh, no, I, I, I think that uh, I, I like him uh, as much or more than – any of the other contenders that have been uh, that I've that I've heard are like either up for the role or fans want them for the role. I think he's just fine. Uh, I I think he's amazing. I think it's a it's the perfect choice for right now. It's he just won an Oscar. He was in my theory of everything, which he was amazing in. He's doing this new movie that I'm really excited for too. It's called The Danish Girl, where he plays a transgendered um, man whose uh, relationship with his wife gets um, just changed throughout life. It's, it's looking amazing. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like he's, you know, he's he's relatively young. He's in his early 30s. And it's it's there's really no other actor around that age that has that kind of caliber or trend that he that ha that that he has at this point. So I think it's a really smart move. Part of the problem with saying if he's good or not is that we don't know who Newt is really, um, right? But we, it, I, the impression I think we've gotten is that they did the the character is going to be late twenties, early thirties in terms of his age. So in terms of that, he fits the bill. Mm -hmm. um, Nick, but this is going to be the first time that we cast a main character in the Harry Potter universe that has acting uh, has proven himself as a well established and talented actor well yeah, how well, do you, how do you mean a, because in the british role. films i mean the harry potter films are uh full of high caliber british actors yes but they are also secondary characters they're not the main you're cast saying, oh, the main right trio. right so you're talking about yeah the weight the weight of the of these of this series will fall onto his shoulders instead of the shoulders of three children. Exactly. And it could also mean that this movie will be a lot more – the series – it is going to be a trilogy, right? Yes. Okay. At least. So this – Yeah. Okay. Could well, th more. this this new series is going to possibly be a lot more intimate because we won't have to rely on a, a larger caliber of of cast because right. the, 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 if, they're, if they're adding very talented, already established actors, there can be more um, – less of a reliance on a bigger cast with a higher caliber of actors. It t it turns out that uh, Eddie is actually a big Harry Potter fan. I did a little Googling after this was announced. And Shocking. Last year – well, yeah, okay. So everybody's a Harry <laughs> Potter fan. But what was interesting is that earlier this year on the Graham Norton show, he was talking, and Graham asked him about uh, trying for a role in The Hobbit. And then <clears throat> he actually – hinted that he also really wanted to be in Harry Potter. So let me just play a clip from this real quick. Yeah, sure. Oh, God, did you know what? After a few years there, there were, like, there, was, there were the Harry Potter films. There was a whole family of ginger people, and I thought that somehow I might be a part of that at some point. never happened. Um, so just a little bit there. But uh, apparently he really wanted to play a Weasley boy. Oh, man. He'd be a cool Bill Weasley, right? Yeah, I could see him as Bill Weasley, totally. Although I do like Domhnall Gleeson, too quite a bit mm -hmm. he's coming up in star wars so the question i have for you guys then following matt's uh analysis just kind of to the next level then is eddie redmayne too good for a harry potter role i mean he just came off an oscar-winning performance as stephen hawking one of the brightest minds if not the brightest mind of our time uh that now you know with the danish girl playing a transgender man obviously very 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 excellent high quality good film that's going to get a lot of attention a lot of respect for him is i mean is it isn't it kind of a backward step to go and be part of this kitschy very highly sought after blockbuster you know kind of fantasy film not not i mean that in like the least offensive way okay i'm gonna love this movie i know it <laughs> but isn't it a back step to, like couldn't he equally uh just as likely say you know Actually, I'm 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 going on for more you know, well, more of that serious work. Some actors shy away from these big franchise films, especially after they've done a franchise. And I don't think mm -hmm. Eddie has really done that yet. So I think that works in his favor. Mm -hmm. um, it is risky. I mean, he could be responsible for ruining the Harry Potter world. Oh fandom. God, no. <laughs> if it's really bad, I would blame him, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, if you take this role, I won't blame you. But I think. I think it, 
also plays ahead. into the um, my too big to fail theory is they want a big name actor for this. I would have liked to see an unknown take this role like Dan Radcliffe and Watson, Rupert Grant when they first joined on because it would it would be more interesting, sort of like how we wished um, – well, some of us wish David Yates was not directing. We wanted to see a fresh person come into it. Right. Um, but, yeah, I, I think this is just another step in WB's plan to make sure it's a big hit. <laughs> I, yeah, I I think you're right, Andrew, uh, what you said at the very end. Um, it's it, it's also kind of pushing into new territory with the Harry Potter world but with this story because it's never been – it hasn't been written. It's going to be an original you know, screenplay by the actual author, J.K. Rowling, but – they kind of want to have like at least, you know, the kind uh, just a concrete like at, at least some kind of promise that it's going to be well acted, and the actor who is very good at method acting is going to find a way to even make this character come alive and more three dimensional for the audience. I mean, the Harry Potter films, all eight of them, did not win a single Oscar. So Nick, uh, so here Eddie Redmayne has more accolades than the entire first eight Harry Potter. Films. <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> just on, just in terms, no, I mean, you know, there's BAFTAs in, in there somewhere, but, uh, but I mean, Oscar wise, and as far as the Academy is concerned, right. this one man is, is more, has, has achieved more already. Right. So it's, you're, it's, that's very true, Eric, it has, the series, the movie series has not been driven by, by acting as opposed to the story itself and the special effects. I can maybe see the trailer change. now, Oscar winning actor, Eddie Redmayne, <laughs> right? But, Rich but as hell author J.K. I mean, Rowling. <laughs> who knows? They may be going that direction, like with this film, and make it, you know, his insight into the world. There's so many good reasons to see this movie when it finally comes out. You know, it's a period piece, uh, and it, it it follows a guy who we don't know, and it's set in America. So there's three reasons right there. But I mean, maybe they'll be doing that. Maybe that's the route they want to go to get an accredited actor. I the, think the, Andrew brought up the best point in that we don't know really who Newt is. So it's hard to look at any actor that's going to play him and judge whether or not they're going to do a good job of it or not because we don't have any context around really him or any of the other characters that are going to be cast in this film. So when we see names of actors and actresses that are going to be portraying these roles, mm -hmm. it's hard to really judge because we don't know is this a dark character? Is it a humorous character? Is it we don't have that level of context. We just yeah. have his uh, his house, right? He's a Hufflepuff, right? So. <laughs> probably That's not all dark. we know. <laughs> and Eddie Redmayne, a Hufflepuff, take the quiz, Eddie. We need to know. Oh, yeah, we got to get him to take the quiz. I want to talk. Right. The Variety article also mentions uh, at least Nicholas Holt as being like a uh, one of the former contenders. You know that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Or I don't think they use former contender because that implies he's not still in the running, but still like Nicholas Holt. I actually know a little bit more of because he's he's starred in the X Men movies. He's, he plays Beast. Uh, in the new like first class and uh, mm -hmm. he's going to be in Mad Max too, That's and he's amazing. now the st yeah he's going to be the star of the new Mad Max. So he's definitely uh, more in the blockbuster thing. I actually first saw him in uh, Warm Bodies. Yes, he was totally great. I wanted to bring that up. I like that a lot. Yeah, Let, and let's... wasn't he Jack in Jack the Giant Slayer? Yes, yeah, that's yep. him. So this yeah. seems like more his type of his cup of ro tea for for roles, but. I guess I'd like to see, and again, I haven't seen Jupiter as any, but I'd like to see Eddie do a uh, a fantasy. I think that would be yeah. like. And he's ginger, so you know the Harry Potter fans, they eat that up. <laughs> Let's uh, pause for a second. We're going to talk about a, a couple of other characters um, we're finding out for the first time, we're hearing about for the first time, thanks to this report about Eddie Redmayne. Uh, but first, we just want to remind everybody that today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks. With more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. For listeners of MuggleCast, Audible is offering you a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their great service. And today, I want to recommend well, – shout out to Micah again and Eric – well, and really every human on the earth. Uh, any Game <laughs> sorry, of Thrones book. Sorry, I allowed book. to laugh in the ad? <laughs> no, you can. It's fine. But, All right. This is a great time here. We're doing the Audible ad. <laughs> but Micah, uh, what Game of Thrones book would you like to recommend everybody check out on Audible for free? All of them. No. Uh, I think that uh, the one that would follow in sequence with what has gone on in the TV show is A Feast for Crows. Uh, not entirely sure that 
that is the direction the show is going in. But given that a lot of the plot has already been developed on the show from A Storm of Swords, uh, the next in line is A Feast for Crows, followed by A Dance with Dragons. So if you haven't read either of those books, uh, head on over to audible.com and download them for free. Yeah, audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast is where you can get uh, the free audiobook, courtesy of MuggleCast. And now's a great time to try it. Spring is in the air. We're outside more. We're... Allergies are all over the place. Yeah. It's great. Don't carry a book. Just listen in your earbuds after MuggleCast, of course. Audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast. So, uh, jumping back to Eddie Redmayne now. So, I am I was excited about this little tidbit. We also found out that they are going to cat, cast Newt's two sisters their parents, and somebody called Jacob. <laughs> That's all we know about Jacob. He's just somebody called Jacob. <laughs> now, at least so I, I read Oh No, They Didn't's uh, re- report on this. <laughs> They're already hoping that Jacob is the lover of Newt, which I would love. <laughs> played, by, played by Taylor uh, Lautner? Yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm... Uh... So, I mean, there's not much to say because, again, we don't know this story, what mm-hmm. this story is going to be at all. But we know that Newt's family is going to play into this somehow. It's yeah. interesting because, like, I just imagine he's away from home. What? How could his immediate, you know, family have a role to play? Right. Well, uh, that's what I'm kind of excited for, too, about this Jacob character, especially because it's obvious that Jacob's going to be like his his companion or his best friend along the road. Or his lover. Lover. Yeah. His and I. Yeah, like, nemesis. like he's <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord no, Jacob. No, Jacob, yeah, that's that's not gonna happen. What if Jacob has a rival like book that he's working on? <laughs> he's gonna, <laughs> yeah. he's, uh, I, I will report on all the animals. I'm gonna report on Quidditch through the ages. Yeah, extremely yeah, right. cool beasts and where um, to discover them. Yeah. But as like a on a selfish kind of standpoint, uh, I would hope that Jacob would be his friend that he meets in america so we could see an american character in in this kind of universe and since it's set in the u.s i mean i think the possibility is pretty good and that'll be the first time we'll have a american character in the harry potter stories right yeah i think so yeah absolutely so uh yeah jacob sounds like an american name that's not that's not a british name right no it's a very american name 10 jacobs are gonna write in hello andrew as as Americans, we say, "Oh yeah, it's an American name." <laughs> uh, any, I mean, I guess having a family. Well, maybe I'm overthinking it, but maybe this story could have more of a family element to it than the Harry Potter books did. Like uh, in terms of the nuclear family, because well, he's not he's not a he's not an orphan, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, there's that. Yeah. Hey, his parents are alive. Woo. Yeah, yeah, they're they're coming over to visit. Oh, yeah. what if like Newt has to entertain his folks for a week in New York in the twenties when they Mom and Dad, when all hell breaks work. loose, right? It's just like you're. But I thought, uh, and just going what we know of the character's backstory through other, whether it's Pottermore, other means, like there was a period of time where he traveled. Basically, I don't know if they you can call it safari if it's not to Africa. That's my ignorance speaking. But he's on like a safari, on like a, a concentrated trip across the world to write this book. And my early impression of the plot was like that, you know, he was traveling. When you travel like that, you're kind of doing it alone. Like Darwin, Charles Darwin to write Origin of the Species uh, may have had a few assistants, but I mean, he took himself out of the main world to go and and observe animals for years uh, Mm -hmm. before writing that book. And that's what I compare this book to. I know it's quite high, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and I loved the first part in Deathly Hallows when they were on the road, mm-hmm. and I think it really added something to even the movies too. That it was kind of right. just them on their own. So, I, I I think J.K. Rowling writes really good dialogue when it comes to that kind of story driven. When it's not necessarily based on like exciting plot points too, it's mostly about the characters, which is why I think they need a good actor to uh, in the films to kind of hold that. Yeah, stuff. that's 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 certainly true. Now, remember uh, J.K. Rowling's little synopsis that she released a few months ago says Newt Scamander only meant to stay in New York for a few hours. So, yeah, if I were to speculate wildly in terms of of the family, I would say the family is missing Newt because he's staying in New York longer than he intended. (laughs) 
Well, do we even know for sure that it's going to be in the U.S. for a majority of the story? I, I mean, the way it's that set, that they've said set in 1920s New York, so I think the majority of it is it going to start there? Like, is it going to open up in New I, York? I kind of doubt that. I think it's just. Gonna, I honestly think it's going to just start in New York City, or at least have like the beginning of this whole this whole trilogy, what have you, in the city. But if he's going to be finding Fantastic Beasts. Like, he's got to go to other places besides the metropolitan city of New York. Yeah, I think we once speculated. Come on now. <laughs> you've, you've been to New York. We have plenty yeah. of Yeah, but plenty non, stuff non, to do. non-human animals I'm talking about. I, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks no, for clarifying. I, I think we, we've talked about this a little bit on past episodes, the, the possibility of where these fantastic beasts could live in New York mm-hmm. City. Right. Uh, Central Park uh, is definitely up there. You know, some of the different train stations and other areas that are in and around New York. And certainly, if you've ever seen a New York rat in the subway, that's that's a fantastic. That's a fantastic beast. beast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the Apple Store, that's another place I think he's going to find. Some <laughs> Which was definitely around in the 1920s. Yep. Yep. It's going to be say great. Find, I was going to say you'd find Voltorb there because it's electronics, but that's more like Pokemon. <laughs> so never mind. But I think we also speculated that, or maybe it was me, that um, each film could be set in a different place. So this one's New York. In the next film, he's going somewhere else to go find beasts. And then in the 30s, somewhere else. Like Italy. Yeah. Like James Bond, where they always do an exotic location. Yeah. Them. I think it's, it's going to be, be cool. great seeing, like, witches in flap, flapper girl un- um, clothes with yes. wands. It's going to be it's gonna be great for the wardrobe department in Warner Brothers. It's I'd prefer be- this weren't a family movie, to be honest. <laughs> Now, but one I'm... question I did want to ask, though, and I guess maybe more so for, for Matt or even you, Andrew, is knowing that J.K. Rowling has yet to finish the script, she has a little bit of George R. R. Martin syndrome, it seems like, in terms of <laughs> being able to write quick enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is slated to be released next year, right? Yeah, that, isn't that crazy? So how fast are they going to have to film this thing? Uh, they Usually it could take you know, the, the the typical shoot for a movie is 30 days um, for principal photography. But I I honestly think that they will <laughs> – they might just split this movie into two movies and make it a trilogy. Oh, God. But no. we don't know no. We don't know by how much sh- uh, J.K. Rowling has written. She could be pretty much done. She's just editing it. We don't know. And that sh- – there's no way that, that, that she hasn't told – the 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 studio what the story's about from beginning to end i think it's mainly just fine details that she's trying to work out well then well, she they, needs to stop they, taking trips to new york and lighting up the empire state building and oh yeah. you're just mad yeah. that she didn't invite you over for beer i these just sound like excuses that game of Thrones fans are saying to their author but we already know that um they're they're planning to film in late summer so i don't think they're behind at, at any any point. Okay. But I yeah. No, I was just asking the question. Okay. Yeah. I I, I think once it's it, it starts, it like starts all at the same time. Like it's, yeah, we're gonna be w- here once they go, they're gonna stuff. go hard. So, like I've said, casting is gonna be really interesting because hopefully we're gonna get some descriptions about these characters when these reports about who they're pl- like. You know, yeah. when we find out who plays Jacob, we're gonna get like maybe a sentence about who he plays or what who who the character is Mm -hmm. and they're gonna and and they're gonna keep casting even around the time when they even start filming like they did that with lord of the rings they actually cast vigo mortensen while they were filming because they made it they made a change because the actor that they did cast was too young so they Stuart townsend yeah it was Stuart townsend yeah so so yeah let's move on uh until next month well actually later this episode we asked our followers on Twitter and Facebook, what they think of Eddie Redmayne, and we'll uh, discuss that later on. So a couple other news stories to discuss this week. First of all, we know that the Harry Potter Illustrated Editions are coming. The first one is coming out later this year in October. Um, And for the first time, we're getting a look inside the Illustrated Editions. And we've previously speculated, like, how these are going to look. We already knew there's going to be over 100 illustrations in the first book, which is really great. And now we're seeing the inside, and gosh, they are just oh, beautiful. They're amazing. I haven't seen these yet. So there's the, – the pages do look much bigger than a standard Harry Potter book, and there are two columns on each page. 
and there's just a lot of spacing around the text and a lot of the pages share um a lot of the uh, share, share uh, like you know 50 percent illustration 50 percent text and they just look beautiful mm -hmm. gosh this this one of hagrid right and dudley just just creating yeah. the the pig's tail and one of his slippers has fallen off one of his crocodile or alligator slippers has fallen off like this is beautiful yeah i cannot wait to reread the books like this is going to yeah. be so fun and i'm not i was thinking i'm not gonna skim through this book like at the store like just look at all the illustrations i want to buy it and yeah. then only look at the illustrations as i'm reading this, this is the such most a great book. the it's most worth... added value that they have been able to do for any of the harry potter books since they for, were first I published agree. i agree uh when yeah. is this book being released october shoot and uh it, there's going to be one released every year i guess every october um and have we spoken about the cover yet on this show i don't think we have so maybe not. We so the cover came out as well for the Sorcerer's Stone Illustrated Edition, mm -hmm. and I love it because it is a complete reimagination. It fe it features the Hogwarts Express, but the Hogwarts Express is not what how you've seen it before in the movies or even the books. It has it's been inspired by a dragon. It has uh kind of like wings. It's got a dragon head on the top of the smokestack. It's got these, um, like, I don't know what you would call them, on the, like, on the Palm spine. Trees. Palm trees? What? At the front of the... Uh, oh, track. yeah. Yeah. Those I mean, probably aren't pine trees. I know. You know, you know it's, it's funny I'm because <laughs> um, I was looking at the cover of the Philosophers and Sorcerers, and the Sorcerers actually covered up that dragon because the font yeah. is bigger. You I know what I'm saying? I that. I love it because I hate that. I don't know what the hell that dragon thing is. Oh, you don't like it? <laughs> I don't yeah, like I'm, it. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this this redesign. See, I like Hogwarts. it because it's surprising. Like, if yeah. we were just going to be looking through the illustration, illustrated editions and it's like more of what we've seen a million times, that mm -hmm. makes it less thrilling. But surprises like this, I think, are awesome. Mm -hmm. I will actually agree with you. And I'm sure that, that uh, the thing that has like a dog head – is like a proper like that they adorn trains with like a mast of a ship where they'll just get creative with it. But well, that boar know. is also at the um, that's a boar, right? Or a, I don't know what kind of creature that is. But... Wing boar, yeah. Okay, so that thing is also in the front of Hogwarts Castle at the yeah, Wizarding the World of Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought yeah, that was well, a cool reference. Yeah, the boar looks I, cool. I, I it looks like, like the it looks like the like Batman's train. It looks like the Bat train. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, oh yeah, but just those spoilers in the front. Are, uh, are yeah. very bad. Are very bad. But uh, that's so funny. I was relieved that it didn't say uh, on the front of it five nine seven two, right? Because that that is a movieism that just, just the train that they happened to get that they turned into the Hogwarts Express was the number five nine seven two. West Coast Railways five nine seven two. Uh, Steam powered locomotive Olden Hall, I think it was called. But uh, anyway, that's five nine seven two. So now when they when you see like Lego Hogwarts Express. And in the, even in even in, I think the Lego games, even in the movies, you know, in the movies, but also like anywhere else, it's always those numbers five nine seven two, and it's nowhere in the book. So I get really like angry about it. But I'm yeah. glad that that didn't make the transfer back to book. So that's just me. Like uh, Micah mentioned or Eric mentioned, uh, J.K. Rowling was in New York this past week. She was launching the United States arm of her Lumos charity campaign and while she was there uh she did an interview with matt lauer of the today show unfortunately it was a big fluff piece there's another part of the interview coming out tomorrow but i'm not expecting any fireworks um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course matt lauer had to ask the question that everybody's asked her a billion times which is that are you going to write another harry potter book and of course jk rowling gave the same answer she always does she says uh, you know, I've always said I'm not going to say I definitely won't <laughs> because I don't see why I should say that. It's my world and I might choose to step back into it. And in a way, I am stepping back into it with Fantastic Beasts. Um, and then she said, I think Harry Potter 8, as in what happened next to Harry, Ron, and Hermione, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm. And then she said, but even as I answer that, I know that someone's cutting this on YouTube to make it as though I gave you hope. Which is hilarious because the Today Show cut it. 
they, they wrote a headline that made it sound like, you know, she was. Oh, that's help. super funny. <laughs> Their headline was, will J.K. Rowling return to Harry Potter? I'm not going to say I definitely won't. <laughs> that was the- Read the Today Show's <laughs> headline. Oh, God. So that's the despicable. problem with that, though. As fans of the series, do we want that to even right. happen? I, right. I feel like well, we have closure. We know that they're safe. They're happy. They have families. There's no reason to continue his story. And I don't run. understand why people still ask the question. And, yeah. Well, and then the media jumps on this, and it's so annoying. Uh, you know, Entertainment Weekly said this on Facebook. More Harry Potter is not out of the question. <laughs> you yes, already it is. knew this. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You know, you run the risk of actually destroying the franchise when you keep prolonging this, especially if you do sequels. Even if you do prequels, I mean, this Fantastic Beast thing seems to be an original story, which is okay. Like, I'll, I'll give her that. But when you, when you add, when you add extra things to like a, a beginning and an end, when there is an end, like you have to finish there. You can't right, continue. We, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like when you do with. Star I'm just starting Wars. to. Yeah, I was gonna say Lost. Um, but Star Wars too. Like Star Wars is a perfect example. But J.K. Rowling, you know, she's not the one floating these rumors. It's everybody else. And uh, like I point out in this article on Hype of All, uh, why everybody should start asking the question. You know, when are we getting Marauder series? At, don't <laughs> ask Harry Potter eight. Ask Marauders. Marauders. Ask you know Weasley spinoff. I don't know anything but an eighth Harry Potter book. Mm-hmm. Or right. how about the Encyclopedia? <laughs> she should just start answering. Harry's dead. Don't you know that? Harry... Yeah. <laughs> or she Harry should just rewrite the series and have Harry and Hermione end up together, and Ginny dies, and Severus becomes gay, and it's just. <laughs> I think it's Severus and Dumbledore just debate get the press. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, but I think it's safe to say we can say with without doubt that she is never writing Harry Potter eight, right? Not not in that configuration. God, yeah, it won't be so. won't be Harry Potter eight. Right. No, this is our series. I don't want new people like getting in on it. <laughs> I just wanted ours. In the way it is. <laughs> this is our thing. This is our thing. So that's it for news. Matt has a uh, fun segment for us to play this week. Why don't you set it up? Oh my god, we're already there. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so I just uh, thought about doing this little fun segment where you have to guess uh, which quote that I read is by Albus Dumbledore or by a famous quote from a famous person. Oh. So, yeah. So uh, I got a few of them. Uh, Let me pull them up. I try to make them a little ambiguous, but, (laughs) you know, this is from a Wizarding World. So This is kind of like a special edition of Quote Quiz, 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 isn't it? (laughs) Right. What? Oh, I miss Quote Quiz. (laughs) Eric. (laughs) Oh, okay. So... All right, so here we go. Uh, should I make a tally? Do you think? Because I I'll got a few track. of them. Okay. No, because you're gonna lie. No, what? Because you're playing this game. I'm no, I don't lie. Trust. All right. Okay. I, I I got something. You can just worry about the quote and no cheating. Okay. First one. Um. Here we go. It is my. Wait. Who's guessing? Uh. Everybody. Oh. Okay. Or do, do you want me to do one person at a time? I think one person at a time. Okay. Uh, well, just because yeah. otherwise, well, go ahead. We can do it your way. It doesn't matter. I doesn't. Ma- I mean, I don't have that many. So, uh, okay. So the first one is: it is my belief that the truth is generally preferable to lies. Okay. I, um, I think that was not Dumbledore. Who that was, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Eric. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's very. I, that's a. That's a good one. I like that you pulled that because I'm like, eh. But knowing that uh, Dumbledore lied to Harry his whole freaking life, I'm gonna choose that he's. I'm gonna choose to guess, and it's only a guess that he's not that big of a hypocrite and that he probably wouldn't say something like that. So I'm gonna say no. But I like it. I think it's close. I think it. It makes me think. Mm-hmm. I'll, right. I'll agree with the other two. Okay. Neither of you are right. It was Albus what? Dumbledore. It was what? Albus Dumbledore. Uh, that was uh, from the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh gosh! So we, so he hasn't lied to Harry yet. So, <laughs> oh, I guess. that escapes. That goes right through all the rules. Okay. All right. Uh, next one. We become what we think about. Ugh, not. 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 Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. That was Earl Nightingale. Ooh. I have no idea who he is. 
and I probably should, and a lot of the listeners may hate me now. For Look him up now. So. Okay. I'm sorry. If you were right, I'd agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yes, I'm going to say yes. I'll say no. All right. Eric and Micah were right. No. It was it was Robin Williams. No. <laughs> All right. So let's let me choose one. All right. So to the well organized mind, death is but the Donald next great adventure. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we bro- we breached. Yes, we one. know the right answer to that one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> that spoiled right. it. Okay. <laughs> Although that quote also sounds like something from a Robin Williams movie. Hook, right? This is like death. Yeah, this is but the, yeah, that'd be this great adventure. Yeah, death is but the next great adventure. That's from Peter Pan. To die uh, would be a great adventure. Let me see. All right, so uh, to live. Sorry, I misquoted. We are all born mad. Some remain so. <laughs> Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. Is this a Robin Williams quote or not? Uh, no, no, I would say no. Okay. I'm gonna say Dumbledore. Okay. My answer is no, because it's Robin Williams. All right. Uh, it was not Albus. It was Samuel Beckett. Ooh. Who said that? Okay. Um, One time. More. Okay. Um, the truth is a beautiful and terrible thing and should therefore be treated with caution. Hmm. That sounds like Dumbledore to me. I think so, too. I don't think so. All right. It was Albus. Yes. Ooh. All right. Looks like Eric won, guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. Congrats, Eric. Yeah. No, you it, still, uh... Andrew, do you still want to be finished? Do you want to keep going? <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll, I'll okay. accept Thanks, defeat. Friend. No, I was okay. just uh, – I that that's a really good – that's really well done, Matt. I That's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought this would be a lot harder to do, but <laughs> he's a pretty no, ambiguous you. guy. Was that uh, was that last quote from Half Blood Prince? It uh, – Mm, which one did I read, read again? No, it wasn't. I think it was. Um, oh, I think it was actually. It was this terrible Prince. thing, which must be treated with. Yeah, I with think. I, yeah, that was. I that may was, have. Ju- I may have just read that the other day because we're going through book six on Aloha More podcast. But uh, most of so, these were Half Blood Prince. Well, yeah, duh, because that's where we see Dumbledore the most. Oh yeah, that's true too. I guess. No, I think it's Sorcerer's Stone. I just googled it. Huh. The okay. truth, Dumbledore side. It is a beautiful and terrible thing and should therefore be treated with great caution. That's what you read, right? Oh, he's probably yeah. talking about what Era said or Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Probably. That's interesting. Okay. So it's time now for this month in Harry Potter history. Woo-hoo! These are these are kind of challenging to find because I've yet to find like a Harry Potter timeline that sort of has everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- these segments are by no means complete, but I try to find the biggest things. This, this I think is the mother of all dot, dot, dot in history thing. Mm-hmm. April, 1997, Arthur A. Levine from the Scholastic Corporation won the rights for $105,000, the rights to publish Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Mm-hmm. More than Levine had ever paid any author, let alone a first-time novelist. So that was a heck of a gamble, and yeah. how it paid off. Yeah, best hundred five thousand I've ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny now. Sometimes you hear headlines like, "Oh, this publisher just spent a ton of money on an unknown author. It's going to be the next Harry Potter," and then it never is. Mm. Like a recent example, I can can think, can think of is Queen of the Tearling. Oh yeah, everybody was really excited about that. Apparently, Emma Watson was going to star in it. I mean, wow. and Warner Brothers is doing this with David Heyman producing. We've talked about it on the show before. Yeah, I've, I've heard the name before. Don't yeah, so that. Erica Joe Hansen, that was the author, and apparently the, the publisher paid a lot of money, but it just didn't it didn't uh, didn't take off. Well, it can't all be hits. I mean, no. even even measuring the success of, I mean, they tried to do the His Dark Materials movie, right? The Golden Compass came out, but they never followed this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The Narnia films, which I I still love, I was surprised to find that they had actually done Dawn Treader after Caspian because I thought Caspian didn't do well. But uh, I loved Dawn Treader, but they've kind of stopped doing those movies. Uh, and even measuring the success of 
Twilight or Hunger Games or Insurgent or sorry Divergent, which is still coming out, to weigh it against Harry Potter once it's finished, I wonder how it'll compare. How yeah, like the it. longevity of the series? Yeah, like longevity, uh, profit, probably adjusted because the money's always. Well, I mean, let's compare it to Twilight too. Like mm-hmm. Twilight was huge, like it was yeah. massive, and now it's kind of like in like, the shadow of Harry, right? But then one has lasted longer than the other. I, yeah, I don't even think it's really like the shadow effect. I think it's also since Harry Potter and I, I, I would compare Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings as like something that. It stands the test of time. It will stand the test of time because it will be. I know Harry Potter will definitely be remade, whether it's in like 80 to 100 years. But there is no doubt in my mind that Harry Potter will be at least um, rebooted of some sort, especially Hollywood, if they got their hands on it. And it's going to stay within like society and and our culture from our generation at the very least. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas Twilight, Twilight won't. Yeah, th- th- those were. Y- I mean, this is kind of like a new thing with young adult books being made into films, into trilogies, and to quadrility trilogies from just one book or something. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's a trend that started really with Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, also in the timeline here, April 2012, <laughs> Pottermore, our favorite website, opened to the public following a beta period. Yeah, and much hype. But it's been quiet on the Pottermore front lately. Hmm. We're waiting for Deathly Hollows now. And so Pottermore is close to ending. And yeah, it's been and it's been three years. Yeah, maybe they're going to drop it all at once. Like, um, you know, I guess they did that with Half Blood Prince, I think. Mm. And then also mm. in April 2012, J.K. Rowling announced her first post Potter book, The Casual Vacancy. Hey yo, I still have it, and I still have not opened it. <laughs> I I have a confession. I tried to sell it a couple Ooh. weeks ago what? At, a, at a book at one of those stores that buys books. A and they copy? No. Okay, too, sh- too shame. Too shame. First of all, that you tried to sell it, but second of all, that you were unsuccessful in selling it. Yeah, they it. wouldn't even accept it. They were what? like, "No, we don't want this." It's one of those book exchange places where you can take books in and they'll yeah. buy. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't take it. I was actually really surprised. They probably no have, good here. They probably have already a few of them. Maybe, but the, sometimes they'll – I don't know. Well, you know, winter's over. They don't need to burn anything for You're fire trying. anymore. So, <laughs> so no, Well, actually tied into that, I know you have it a little bit further down here, but the fact that it's going to be on HBO on April 29th. Yeah. And for me, I've, I've read the book. Uh, I don't have a very strong recollection of everything that's happened in it, and I would find it very difficult to do a reread. Because it is a very kind of slow moving pace to it. It picks up at different parts, but I, I just don't know if I can put myself through reading that book again. It's it's very dark. Yeah. And it's just a difficult read. It it's certainly not in any way the style that Harry Potter was written in. It's much, much different from the the Corman Strike novels. Uh and so this kind of, of book by her I know a lot of people, you guys have touched on it, have found it very, very difficult to read. Yeah, I, I, um, I, re- I was actually just talking about this with a friend last night. We both read about the first hundred pages, and then we gave up. It was just yeah. like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Too bored. Sorry. I made, I made it about that far in, too. But that, that same month, actually, so before that announcement in April 2012, that was when Mike and I devised our, our big April Fool's joke that year. Was that we're gonna say that the new novel has a, a different name because we didn't know the name of the book. It was mm-hmm. announced then, and so we made that uh, April Fool's article on MuggleNet called uh, the, "What Was It?" The Layers of Lady Poe, which I think is an anagram for uh, for uh, like April Fools. Yeah, April Fools Day. That's what it was. Um, and uh, the funny thing is, I got my uh, roommate's typewriter out. And uh, spattered blood on the pages and typed the the title, and it was supposed to be an image of uh, like Joe's own manuscript. Mm-hmm. And we released it, and it got picked up. And I still found an article by EW just while we were talking there of the uh, of the article because um, I don't know it gained gained some widespread attention. But later that month, she announced the real the real title. So that's funny. I didn't, know I don't that. know. I'm not, I'm not claiming that we forced her hand, but it was <laughs> funny that no, it's like in the, not in the same way that Micah does all the no, time on right. Twitter. Yeah. Um, I will watch the casual vacancy on HBO. Finally, I will know what happens in this. Yeah. It's a <laughs> I, to be honest, that's, that's also the reason why I never, 
never went to actually read it once they announced they were filming a series because like the people Why read who have when read you it watch them on TV? well right. it's, you know it's it's, it's, it's much easier precedent. it's <laughs> i hear it there's a lot of like parts in the book that are kind of you know they, they kind of stop the story a little bit so Look, I, I don't know about that but it's grueling like the uh the death of um the main character what's his name not stanley yelnats that's holes Fats. uh what Fats? I'm just guessing. That's the no, only character no, no, no. The, the, the the patriarch character. The well, don't spoil um, it. Oh, got, Barry no, Fairbrother. Fair Fairweather. Fair fair weather. Fair brother. Yeah, whatever. He, he, the death of this character starts the sh- the story. Starts right? the yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that sh- hopefully is not a spoiler. But uh, I know that in the TV series they're keeping him around a little longer. Um, oh, so like they start a little earlier. To they either Barry. they either start yeah they may start earlier and just show some of the like backstory things that are written in the book are probably going to be like first story like beginning of the story yeah and then they'll have his death somewhere in the middle of the series but that I mean the book if if you read even the first the first chapter is him waking up with a headache right and then eventually dying and there's nothing he can do because he succumbs to this really painful aneurysm in his head and he bleed he like bleeds out and dies in front of his family oh, and it's nice. like it's the most like yeah it's so so crushing Cheery novel uh, yeah but i think it's it, so so crushing and that was it, the point i think to some extent joe was yeah. trying for well, gritty what she's really trying for is you know, yeah. taking a deep look at society and social issues. And I think that she really brings them to light. And mm-hmm. that's what at times can make it very challenging to read because, you know, these, these are very, very difficult situations that a lot of these characters are going through. And actually, I think, isn't Michael Gambon in yeah. mm-hmm. the cast? Uh, yeah. I don't know of any other Potter actors, but I know I saw him on a preview uh, when I was uh, watching HBO the other day, so there there may be some familiar faces for Potter fans that have been cast in the series. Sold, yeah, but, I will um, watch the show. Th- they are also going to be so it already aired in England on BBC, and oh. yeah, what what are the oh, how are the reviews for it? Fine, I think they're fine, um, but they're also going to be adapting the Corman strike novels, which I'm very excited about because there's That'll a be wealth cool. of material there and the books are actually like really good. So, okay. What, what is, what, what is that? What? The Corman strike, Robert Galbraith. Her, yeah. The her whodunit Kibu's books. Falling and yeah. the Silkworm. Yeah. And whatever oh, the third one is. Okay. okay. So have JK you, Rowling wrote some other books under Robert Galbraith <laughs> and they are called the Cuckoo's Calling and the Silkworm. They're really good, Matt. They're actually really, really good. Did you not okay. know that? You knew that. I knew. I, I knew the. Uh, I knew Cuckoo's Calling, and yeah, I think I did know about Silk, the Silkworm too. I haven't read. It. I mean, actually, I do have the a Cuckoo's, Cuckoo's Calling, and I did read a little bit of it, and um, I just lost interest. Oh well, sorry. <laughs> I've lost interest in you being on the show. Bye. Oh, gosh, Bye. Oh, he's this he's kicked Harry out. Potter. There's like a, a flap in the floor that he falls through. Yeah, no, yeah. everybody has to like the Robert Galbraith books. They're great. Why? They're really good. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, now it's time for another new segment. Pen and paper are my priority. This is where we catch up on what J.K. Rowling's been doing on Twitter recently. Uh, she's been, I guess, busy. There hasn't been as many tweets, but... um. She did a little rumor control recently. She uh, somebody tweeted her with a image. I'm sure it's from apparently it's from did you know blog dot com, whatever the hell that is. So it said in 2009, J.K. Rowling announced that Harry Potter lost his virginity in the second half of Goblet of Fire, but had to edit it out because their editor said it would cause parents to complain and called Bloomsbury during office hours. What does that even mean? <laughs> We have to edit this out because people are going to call the Bloomsbury office. That's the so stupid. So somebody Wait. tweeted Joe saying, is this true? She replied, hashtag never happened. And then somebody replied to her. How would you know? <laughs> like sarcastically. <laughs> and then JK Rowling said, fair question. He tells me everything. So <laughs> Harry tells JK Rowling when he gets laid, apparently. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he would have been 14. Yeah, I think that – well, yeah, 14, 15. Mm-hmm. So um, something else happened with a hypable writer. So uh, hypable writer McCall went 
to her Lumos event in New York City, and she kind of like took a selfie with Joe in the background, and then she tweeted it at Joe. Um, I think. You know, actually, come to think of it, she didn't even tweet it at Joe, so I wonder how Joe even noticed. Anyway, J.K. Rowling, for some reason, replied, were you as cold as I was? Which, by the way, we were kind of freaking out because it was like, oh, my God, J.K. Rowling replied. And then Mikhail said, your light gave me warmth. Thank you for all you do. And then J.K. Oh. Rowling replied with double X, as oh. in kissness. Now, how cool is it to get a tweet like that from J.K. Rowling? I would print out this entire conversation on a T-shirt and yep. wear it every day of my Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. It's kind of like meeting the president. It kind of, yeah. <laughs> like Micah did last week. <laughs> oh, was that? Oh, I see what you did there. Meaning J.K. Rowling's better, I think. For those of you that don't know, uh, Micah posted a picture, didn't you? <laughs> Who yeah, took I did. the picture, Micah? Who took the picture? Because you're you're taking a picture in the photo, but somebody else is taking a picture of you that has Obama in it. So the person taking that photo is one of our photographers. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was going to be like Emerson yeah. or something. Oh, no, Obama is playing basketball at the White House, right? And Micah is there covering the event? Yes. No, he's playing yeah. with Obama. <laughs> yeah, you don't and see. I actually jump out and reject the shot. Um, let the president this. win, Micah. How many times do we have to tell you this? So uh, finally, a little update on the third Robert Galbraith book. Uh, somebody tweeted her asking about it, and she said – uh, Robert Galbraith says to tell you he's very close to finishing his third. He still doesn't know his Twitter password. Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I guess that explains why he hasn't tweeted in a while. So that was oh, in mid-March. I so I, I, I'm really excited for the f- third Robert Galbraith book. It's, we got to be hearing about it soon. God, I'm getting anxious. I, I'd rather her just finish uh, the movie script that she's doing too. I'm <laughs> sure she's working on both at the same time. So on Twitter, like we said earlier in the episode, we asked everybody, what do you think of Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander? Presumably it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Twitter, twitter.com slash MuggleCast, we got lots of responses. Uh, Z, sorry, C-D-O-N said, I was hoping they would cast a relatively unknown actor so we wouldn't have preconceived ideas and who could grow into the role. Uh, and said something we sort of said, never imagined what Newt would look like. If only the actor portrays him like the loony kind of character I picture, I'm fine. Do you guys mm. see him as loony? I don't know. Loon- well, <laughs> I, th- I I see him as a very curious person. If he's going to be doing this book, I feel like yeah. he's he might show like a little bit of a weird obsession over something that a lot of the people are are confused about or like, why are you why are you so interested in doing this? He's a yeah. character who is willing to get his hands dirty. Very puffy. Very mm-hmm. very helpful puffy. I, I feel love like him. he's got a little bit of Xenophilius love good to him. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like I was I was gonna say a cross between Xenophilius and like Sherlock Holmes. This whole Luna like a thing social outcast. It's funny because doesn't his grandson marry Luna? Xenos uh, does. Right? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, Newt's Newt's grandson. Oh, Mar- Rolf. Marries. Isn't it Rolf? Isn't it like a great grandson or something? Rolf like Scamander. That? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it could be a great grand. I'm not sure. Rolf Scamander ends up marrying Luna, but yeah, it's funny that they they're like this guy's a loony character because that that connection has already like taken root. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he is he is somebody who seeks. He's an academic. He seeks knowledge, not in necessarily the Ravenclaw way, but he seeks the truth of. Of these beasts, he's doing a mass study of of animals. He's which would separate him from the common folk who would oh. either ignore animals entirely or not pay as much attention to their habitat. It takes it takes a lot of uh, to study. Just thinking about, I'm watching that documentary called Life, which is narrated by uh, Richard Attenborough, and just the, the knowing that the people, the camera crews who go to like the ends of the earth to film creatures that have never been filmed before. Um, and and learn about them and, and catch like it's just crazy like the isolation the um, anti socialism that you have to uh, have innate to you to be able to deal with the isolation um, it sets it sets up a different type of character so yeah I, I do think that he's a little loony in the sense that he is a little different from your average Joe. 
who would be content interacting with other wizards. Rohan Go to Bed, who yeah. plays young Sirius Black in Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2, is actually a Muggle cast listener. And he replied, wouldn't complain, but feels a little safe. Would love to see a casting out of left field like Rory Kinnear. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Rohan Go to Bed. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do really understand what a lot of these listeners are coming from when you want like a relatively unknown person, because we always want to have a fresh face for a fresh character that we don't know. And right. uh, it's a lot easier to cast a more well-established actor when you have a good basis on what the character is, because we as Harry Potter fans, especially, we are notoriously guilty of constantly comparing the movies and the books and also like actors from the characters that they're going to portray. Like we're notorious for it, but um, I completely understand why the studio decided to be safe and have a well established actor who could find multiple levels of a character that we haven't seen before. So yeah. One other question, and we may not be able to answer this now that just kind of popped into my mind is, you know, is this going to be more of an adult type of film? The Potter series could be classified as being a little bit more geared towards kids and young adults, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but could knowing that this role is somebody who's in their late twenties, early thirties, these the series have a little bit more adult themes to it. That's uh. a good point because you know a, a young adult starring in this. I think you're right. But mm -hmm. if Warner Brothers wants this to be a big hit. They want the Harry Potter audience, the same Harry Potter audience. Well, the same Harry Potter audience is in their mid to late twenties, right? But they're also trying to, but they're going to want to get the younger kids too, because I mean, they're still look at the illustrated editions. They're still trying to find new audiences mm -hmm. for Harry Potter. So, but I, yes, I, that's a good point too, Matt. I mean, these people, the fans have grown up, so maybe the story should as well. And the story of Harry Potter is the story of a young boy who be, who has this journey like it's it even the books themselves if you compare the deathly hallows to the philosopher's stone they're co they're geared completely to a different uh, age age demographic and that's the demographic of course is made by like society and how we tell like kids cannot kids can only read kitty things and innocent things but the whole series is also like the agenda of the harry potter series is that children can be exposed to very adult things mm -hmm. as long as you you know they they understand the life lessons and everything so i i would love for it to be a more mature series questions okay. we just don't have answers for so, okay, and then over on Facebook, just want to mention a couple more. Um, people were holding out for Matt Smith. People were hoping that the Doctor Who alum would star. I definitely saw great potential in that. Um, there was a rumor about that happening, but doesn't look like it. Mm. Maybe he could be Jacob. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. And they'll be lovers, and they'll set Tumblr on fire. And uh, said, finally, I might be delusional, but I'm still holding out hope for Dev Patel. He would be so good. So yep. thanks, everybody, who participated on Twitter.com slash MuggleCast and Facebook.com slash MuggleCast. We're going to uh, look ahead. Well, we we had a calendar segment at the very end of the show, but we already spoke about the casual vacancy. Oh, I can talk about something on the calendar. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, hold on. But first, we're going to uh, plug a couple things. Uh, yes. Like we mentioned at the start of the show, Matt and I are doing a podcast with Laura and Elisa called Millennial. You can go to millennialshow.com. We got a new episode every week and lots of bonus content if you donate to our Patreon. Um, but more details about that after you get into Millennial. So uh, check out the show. We're having a lot of fun talking about politics, entertainment, everything that's going everything. on. But it's a great show. I recommend it. Thanks, Micah. <laughs> and uh, one other podcast that uh, Eric and myself do along with our friend uh, Zach Louie is Game of Owns. And given that the show starts its fifth season tonight or whatever the timing is, depending on when you listen to this episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years, uh, but there's no time uh, to get into it like now with the fifth season starting. Uh, you can 
you know, find us, follow us, uh, game of owns.com and then Twitter and Facebook game of owns. So, uh, give us a listen. I'm sure if you enjoy the series, we plugged it earlier. Uh, you'll enjoy the podcast as well. And I wanted to mention before we close out our show that this coming Saturday, that's April 18th, a very special event is heading to the UK. Uh, London's Excel Center will play host to uh, MuggleNet's live event, first ever live event called Expo Patronum. And the big thing to know about this is that 17 members of the cast and crew of uh, Harry Potter will be in attendance. So I'm going to list a couple of them here. Warwick Davis will be there. Uh, Natalia Tenna will be there. Harry Melling, who played uh, Dudley Dursley, will be there. Nick Moran, who played Scabier. Fan favorites like Chris Rankin. Rohan Gotobed will be there as well. And really just a whole bunch of others. On the cat on the crew side, we have uh, Mina Lima, the art... Um, sorry, M- Mina Lima, the graphic artist for the Harry Potter films. And Gary Tompkins, who's the art director... Uh, for Harry Potter as well, will all be there. This is a one-day event. Uh, it's I think eight hours in length, and tickets start at forty-five pounds. If you in, if you are in or on around, if you're in on or around London next Saturday, please check us out. And the website uh, address for this is live.mugglenet.com. It's your last possible week to get tickets because the event, as I said, is on Saturday. And just announced guest Eddie Redmayne is coming. Hey, <laughs> God, just uh, not yet, not just yet. Kidding. I think we're working on him. <laughs> Let him read the script first, then you can start. Yeah, yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Oh, and Al- Alfred Enoch will be there too, and he's big on uh, how to get away with murder now. Uh, so yeah. that's really exciting. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. looking at the calendar, like we said, uh, J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy television series hits HBO on April 29th. The first two parts will air back-to-back April 29th from 8 to 10 p.m. And the third and final part will air the following evening from 8 to 9 p.m. So it's a weekend event. You and The Casual Vacancy. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody wants to buy my Casual Vacancy book, by the way, let me know. <laughs> I am trying to sell it. <laughs> Sign it. And uh, that'll increase the value. Sign it me, sign it J.K. Rowling, sign it Robert Galbraith. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I'm moving soon. I need to get rid of it. <laughs> yes. Nobody say yes. You can't sell J.K. Rowling's book. You can't secondhand that. I know. See, it's so funny. I I was really torn. I was like, would I really yeah. sell a J.K. Rowling book? Right? I just It don't probably know. took you a lot to go in, like a lot of effort just to go in that store, but to be denied. Yeah, that's that, a sign, dude. You so should now, just stop. So now, no, now I'm more determined than ever. I'm like, who, who <laughs> will buy, buy this? Andrew's book. <sighs> and then, I mean, also, uh, uh, you know, we don't have an exact date yet, but if you're looking for more J.K. Rowling writing, I would expect an announcement about that third Robert Galbraith book, which, as you can tell, I'm very excited for, and I won't be <laughs> selling my copies of that. <laughs> On the next MocoCast episodes, pen and paper are my priority segment. We'll find out. When that book is coming. I'm going to start tweeting her every day until she... she... <laughs> Maybe she'll buy your book. <laughs> you know, I was uh, trolling her last night. I was out. I had, had a few drinks and I got back and it was like one thirty Pacific time. So it was like morning England time and J.K. Yeah, Rowling yeah. was up tweeting. So um... <laughs> I'm not proud of this one. I may delete this tweet. Gosh. So I, I like trolling her on Twitter. I like just tweeting her random stuff. <laughs> One day she'll reply. And I tweeted her uh, last night. Did you hear this rumor about Eddie Ray- Eddie Redmayne playing Newt? I just don't know. Hashtag not my Newt. <laughs> so <laughs> I encourage everybody to start using the hashtag not my Newt. <laughs> but a couple mm-hmm. people replied to me. They were like, um, uh, uh, gosh, what did she say? Oh, some people said, uh, Andrew, what's wrong with you? Eddie is amazing. So people thought I was serious, but I was just kidding. All right, everybody. Well, <laughs> on that note, um, thank on that you. Note. <laughs> on that, ah, oh, yeah. Well done. Thank you, thank you. I'm pretty proud of that. Thanks that should, for listening. That should be the that should be the episode title. On that note. <laughs> on that note, you got it, Matt. Thanks for coming on. I'm sure we'll have you on again in the future. That is great. Sure. Thank you guys for having me, Mike and Eric. Uh, thanks for coming on. I'm sure we'll have you guys on again in the future. <laughs> I hope so. If if our edition goes through, and uh, we'll see everybody next time for in May for episode two seventy eight. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.